We're just going to walk out our salvation with fear and trembling, right? I think I got, I got the trembling part down tonight. And <laughs> and I was just listening to God today and um, feeling the weight of the presence of God during worship and just realizing that that trembling isn't just about, you know, the relevance of how big God is, but it's it's the weight that we have to carry of his his presence and his anointing, right? Wow. Awesome time in worship tonight. Isn't God good? Like Pastor said, he's just not gonna leave us alone. Thank God he's not gonna leave us alone, amen. I had the opportunity to preach on a Sunday night, and uh, God was just speaking through me, and it was one of those rare occasions where I got to just kind of say whatever I wanted to. It was whatever the Holy Spirit wanted to. And so I'm glad to see some teenagers here tonight. You weren't scared away completely. <laughs> it was, uh, I was telling them, I'm like, I'm preaching really hard, and I feel really good about it. My, my leaders were like, yes, and teenagers were like, eee. Praise God. So tonight, I have the great pleasure and opportunity to speak to you. I'm blessed to be up here. Uh, it's a place that is way outside of my normal box. And um, I've accepted the call of God in my life and um, accepted the leadership of man of God in my life. And he says, it's your turn. I said, all right, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do this. So I pray that tonight, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit is the only voice that your people hear tonight. That nothing of me comes out, Lord, but all of you. I pray, God, that every person who came in here expecting something from you gets it. On whatever level, if it's completely different than what I'm, I'm speaking, Lord God, that you minister to them that your Holy Spirit is here with us, and I pray that your word is illuminated to all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. My message title tonight is, As Full As You Want To Be. And uh, it's kind of that want to word that I'm emphasizing tonight. As full as you want to be. God's been dealing with me in this for a couple of weeks. Um, I was reading through a devotional that pastor gave me for Christmas, and uh, Tozer is talking about the fact that we can be as holy as we want to be. We can be as full of God as we want to be. All we have to do is want him. All we have to do is seek him or pursue him, as, as Jonathan likes to say it. Pursue God. This journey we have with God where we have to want him enough that he's willing to fill us. We look up at this bottle. This bottle is sitting in the ocean. And if we pull the cork off that bottle and sink it in the ocean, it fills up with the ocean. It's full of the ocean. And, but the ocean isn't full of it, right? The ocean contains the bottle. But the bottle cannot contain the whole ocean. And as for us, we're filled with the goodness of God, but we can't contain all of God. But we can contain part of him. And uh, what I want to do tonight is just talk about how we can be full of the goodness of God and full of the spirit of God so we can be used to li be live the life that we're supposed to live. Amen? So turn your Bibles with me to John 14, verse 16 and 17. I got a lot of scripture to get through tonight. I'll probably skip some of it as, as the Lord leads here. Amen. So here's a, a promise from Jesus. He says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, who in the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor, or knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. 
On Sunday night, I was preaching from Acts chapter 2, where they're up in the upper room, and they're filled with the Spirit of God. This is the, you know, this promise coming to pass that Jesus is saying here, I'll send you this helper, this counselor, this uh, one who's going to, to help you and, and be here in, in my place. So they're received with the, this gift of the Holy Spirit. And they go out into the city and they're, they're speaking all these different languages and sharing the good news of the gospel. And, and half the city comes out, or, or a good percentage of the city comes out, and they're saying, oh, what's going on? I understand these voices. I understand my, this language from all these Galileans. And they must be drunk. And Peter says, hold up. <laughs> no, we're not drunk as you suppose. We're just filled with the Holy Ghost. And then he unloads on them and he says, Jesus is the reason why we're up here. And he died on purpose for you. And then he gets down to the end of his message there, and the people get to this what if moment, or not what if, what now moment. What now moment. And this is why I preach about Sunday night. What's the what now moment? God, what now? And he says, do three things. Repent. Thank God for repentance. We've been doing a lot of that lately with the 714 initiative, and it's been helping us. Amen. He says, repent, be filled with, or excuse me, and um, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. And then he says, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, here's somebody, he just came out of the upper room. He just came from being filled with the Holy Spirit, and he's saying, you need what I just got. He's, he's standing there talking with boldness to thousands of people, empowered by the great Spirit of God, who now possesses him. And he's speaking the word of truth to them. And it says 3,000 people came to Christ at that moment. 3,000 people came and repented and were baptized for the remissions of sins and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's powerful. So we're God-possessed. Anybody raise their hand and say they're God-possessed tonight? That's a lot of hands. Praise God. There was quite a few youth that put their hands up too. So we're, we're filled with this pure spirit of God. Absolute purity of God. And the very gentle essence of Jesus. We're filled with God's righteousness through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Peace and joy and love and freedom from Jesus. We're full of this. We're full of wisdom. We're full of his healing through the Holy Spirit. He is the loving heart of God, this Holy Spirit that lives in each of us. Right? This isn't a one-time deal. We didn't just get filled with the Holy Spirit and now we just live any way we want to, right? Because we're as full as we want to be of God. But how many know that that's not something that just, you just do one time? You don't just get filled up one time. Now, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit the one time, and He's with us always and forever. That, that's what the verse said. He, he's with you forever. He'll abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Thank God He doesn't leave us. And we should want to be possessed by such a pure and perfect spirit as the Spirit of God. The power of the Holy Spirit is the ability to do. It's our ability to live this life that we're supposed to live. It's the power to live a supernatural life, to go beyond our carnal understanding, to go beyond what the world says, go beyond how we live and feel. the power to do. In Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it's going to be up on the screen. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Confident hope 
That means that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what your circumstances are saying, no matter what your, your mind says, no matter what the things of this world that are trying to attach themselves to you say, we can confidently hope that Jesus Christ is with us. Because he, God is our source of hope through the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to do, the power to live. In uh, 2 Timothy 1.14, it says, Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. These things that we read in the Scripture, these promises that God has for us, these decisions we made and committed to the God, the gifts that we were given because of God, we can hang on to them through the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to lose them. They don't have to be stolen by the enemy. They can't be taken by any human. They're guarded. These deposits are entrusted to us and held on by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this whole idea behind the Holy Spirit, we've received him, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, we have the power to do, we have the power to live. How do we do it? How does this work? How does my want to have anything to do with this? You know, I was thinking about my wife and I, our relationship, sometimes we fight. Big surprise, right? We're both, you know, headstrong sometimes. We both want our way. We both think we're right sometimes. And, you know, we fight. And then we go and have our quiet time. We come back together and, honey, I'm sorry. You were right. I was wrong. And she's like, you were right. I was wrong. And everything's fixed, right? But how much better... How much better would it have been if I went into that conversation with the mind of Christ? How much better would it have been if, if she had gone into that conversation with the mind of Christ? And we both went in, and the second that a word was said that our carnal mind erupted and wanted to just lose it, throw things against the wall and just go screeching out of the driveway, right? At that moment, if we had been functioning on a higher level. This relationship you can have with the Holy Spirit, that if you will want Him to lead you, if you will yield what you want to God, then you can have help in every situation, big or small. So how do we, how do we get filled up? How do we get as full as we want to? I was reminded of this, this song, read your Bible, pray every day, and you, I'm the only, my wife's the only one who heard this, grow, 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 okay, so it's this kid's song, and we, we, some of you went to church when you were a kid, she did, I did, and there's a song when you read your Bible, pray every day, and you, okay, three or four, you got it now, okay, so I was thinking about this song, read your Bible, pray every day, and you, all right, and I was thinking about, man, this song is really lame. This song is super lame because uh, it just leaves a lot to be wanted. Yeah, I can read my Bible. Yeah, I can pray every day. But how, wh where's the relationship in that? That just sounds like something I got to do. It's just like something I got to do. It's like a, a duty. We got enough duty at my house. I got three little kids, man. <laughs> this is... So I want to be full of God. And I don't want to just have a, 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 thing, a song in my head, read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. I want, I want to have a relationship with this Holy Spirit that possesses me. A relationship, because the Bible's telling me that he's got all kinds of amazing things for me. He's, got, he's a source of hope, that he, he's wisdom personified, he's healing, he's the love of God. He's the essence of Jesus Christ who is everything to us, is salvation. How do I get to the point where I can actually receive from him? How do I get from A to B? Is it just read your Bible, pray today, and grow, grow, grow? And it was coming out of my spirit that today when I was writing this message is that we had to, to get rid of all the other stuff that's in there first. 
And I got this bottle up here, and just imagine there's a bunch of cares of life in there. All the things that we may want that aren't God. All the things that we may be playing little g God about in our life. All the times in life where we get comfortable because we don't need God right now. Everything's good right now. I just got home from work. I just want to relax. It's Saturday. I don't need God on Saturday. It's Sunday afternoon. I just went to church. I'm good now. Don't you think there might be some stuff in your life that God wants to help you with? And maybe change the way you think and do things? 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. We cast our cares. Another version of that says, Cast all of your anxieties, all the things you're anxious about. Those of you who deal with depression, get it out. Don't hang on to it. It doesn't belong to you. If you are hanging on to it, you are playing God in your life. They might need some deliverance along with that, so please don't take that as your act of correction there. In Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And as I was reading these verses this week, I believe that part of what God's saying in this yoke is easy and my burden is light is is that we're carrying the instruction of the Holy Spirit. We're carrying the light of God through the instruction of the Holy Spirit. And I was, man, I was just experiencing it firsthand, okay? So when God was saying, he'd say like three words to me, and I'd be like, oh, it's too more, it's too much. It's more than I can handle, God. And it was like this revelation's coming to my heart through the voice of the Holy Spirit. I could just feel the yoke of God on me. And then, you know, a little time would pass. Okay, God, I'm ready for the next word. I'm ready for the next part of this burden I'm going to carry, the next part of your yoke. Now I'm preaching to myself tonight, so if that wasn't for you, that's okay. That was for me. So if we really truly want God, if we truly want to be full of God, if we truly want to be full of Him, we've got to open the door of our heart to Him, right? So we cast our burdens and then in Revelation 3.20, is a very, very common, very familiar verse. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens it, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. We've got to open the door of our hearts to Jesus. We've got to, we've got to start the conversation with the Holy Spirit. We're the ones who have to initiate it. We have to want God so much that we push the cares out of our life we focus our heart, our mind on him, pretty much shut off your mind because that's just a natural carnal thing, and get to the point where you can actually listen to the voice of God. You can actually center yourself on him because he's ready to op- come through the door. He's knocking at the door of your heart, and you've got to be ready to open the door for him. Speaking of the carnal of your carnal mind and mine, Romans eight six says, "So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads you to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads you to life and peace." Man, part of this wanting God means that you got to be hungry for the things of God. Who in here has ever been really hungry? really hungry. Is it, right, is it right now? Okay. Not me, I'm good. Um, we're hearing some feedback. It's running for the hills. Matthew 5, 6 talk, says, uh, Blessed are those who do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. It's, it's you wanting it. It's you being hungry for God that's going to bring that feeling from God. 
That's how he's going to do it. You have to want it. You have to be the one who hungers. You think about when you get hungry at first, you just, oh, yeah, I'm kind of hungry. And then eventually, you know, if you're fasting or if you straight up don't have food or you're traveling or something, it becomes painful. And I believe that at that moment where you need God so much, that's when that filling comes and fills you up. We have the hunger and thirst after righteousness. We have the hunger and thirst after the things of God. And this brings me to the next part where I'm going to talk about daily bread. John 6.35 says, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The fullness of God is, is like, it's like eating natural food. It needs to be consumed daily. We have to consume the, the things of God daily. We have to draw on the presence of God daily. We have to have this communication with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Not just when we have a big thing going on in life. Not just when we're in trouble. Not just when, you know, our kids are, you know, in trouble. Not just when we need that thing to happen at work in our daily life no matter what's going on to have this communication with the Holy Spirit Ephesians 3 16 through 19 I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through the Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that the love that surpasses knowledge, that you will be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. It's by his glorious riches that he strengthens you with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's by his riches, and you're strengthened in your inner being, and you're filled with the fullness of God through it. All the things that we have to do in life, we need the Spirit of God to do it. Because, you know, we, well, before we were Christians, we, you know, we only had the carnal mind. We, and now that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus, this new creation that we are um, can't function without, without the Holy Spirit, not properly. We absolutely have to have the gift of the Holy Spirit to function. Without his power, we're doing things on our own power, and we're not going to go anywhere. Second Timothy 1.6 says, Therefore... I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. Stir up the gift of God. How do we do that? Jude one twenty says, But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. What does that look like? Well, we could say we're, we can speak in tongues. You can pray in tongues. You can worship in tongues. You can also, like what I'm talking about, have this conversation with the Holy Spirit. Init- make contact with him early in the day. Have this, this wanting, this desire for him to help you in the smallest of details in your life. Not just in the big things, not just in important milestones. Every moment of every day, we need the power of God to help us. Ephesians 6, 8, 18 says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. All times. We start the conversation and we don't end it. We just keep it going. If I want to be full of the Spirit of God, if I want to receive instruction from heaven, if I want to talk and walk in righteousness, in the righteousness of Christ Jesus, if I want to be the man of God that I'm supposed to be, or for you, you know, if you're a woman, a woman of God you're supposed to be. If I want to be the husband I want to be, 
if I want to be the father that I'm supposed to be, if I want to be the preacher I'm supposed to be, if I want to be the neighbor I'm supposed to be and the, you know, find favor with the boss the way I'm supposed to, I need the power of God to do that. I have to have this clear communication with the Holy Spirit. It's not just a one-time activity to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's every day, every minute. And we have to want it. If our want to isn't in the right place, then, you know, we got to fix that. We've got to get the distractions out. We've got to turn off the TV. We've got to, you know, stop being worried about being so bored and just put, our, put ourselves in a, in a disciplined place and, and worship God. Get focused on God and get focused on the, on the voice of the Holy Spirit. You can pray some things. Maybe, maybe you're not ready to go cast demons out of somebody yet. Maybe your faith's not there yet. You know, because that's what the power of the Holy Spirit tells us, you know, or in the Bible is that uh, in my name you will cast out demons, you will speak in new tongues, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Um, and then, you know, the gifts of the Spirit where you can get words for people and prophesy and lay hands on the sick and they recover. I mean, I'll, right down the line, all these gifts of the Spirit. Maybe you just need to learn to function in the basics of it first. Right? Learn to function in having this conversation with God all the time. Start small. God says those who are faithful in the little things will be faithful in much. Right? That's what he says to his servants. We need to become faithful servants in the little things, and then, you know, our faith will grow. We'll see, we'll see things happen. We'll have a testimony from the little things, and then we'll go, God's real. God really works in my life. Maybe I can go lay hands on somebody. Maybe I can get somebody healed. So you say, God, help me today. Holy Spirit, I need help today. I don't know what's going on today. You know, it's a normal work day. It's a normal thing. I need your help. Give me favor with my boss. Maybe you don't know you need favor today. Maybe he's getting ready to lay you off. Give me favor with my client. You know, you got some clients. You got to make some sales. God, give me favor today. You know, because God knows everything. Pretty sure. Holy Spirit, teach me how to do this. How do, how do I sell? How do I sell stuff? Maybe for you students, how do I how do I do this? How do I write this paper? How do I do this math problem? How do I how do I make this teacher or professor think I am the greatest student on earth? God, give me favor right now. And you just watch the testimonies come out. God, bring me somebody that I can show love to today. Right? It doesn't have to be somebody you you know get healed or although you may in the process. I mean, it doesn't have to be somebody who has a, a demon he's cast out of him. It doesn't have to be somebody who has a completely broken life. It's just somebody who needs, needs to hear Jesus loves you or, you know, hey, can I help you with that? Or can I, can I give you something? Or I got some time for you. How about this one? God, help me be the husband I need to be. You know, because I can, I can come home from work and, or, I can come. I can come home from my. I can, this is an inside thing. Um, I can come home from my my wonderful calling and anointed position at the church. I was trying to relate it to everybody else. Okay. And I could be. I can care. I could be carrying the stress of the day, or not want to talk, or you know, or I could come home to chaos, and. If I'm not ready to listen to God's voice and to react to every situation that I come in contact with, with the mind of Christ, then I could end up totally blowing it. God, help me be the husband I need to be today. Help me be the father. Lord, empower me and lead me. Help me to do even the small things according to your perfect will. Teach me, Lord, because you know everything. Yeah. Teach me. In this journey, in this pursuit of God, we can't forget that we don't get to take breaks in it. We don't get to take breaks. And as we, our bottle, as this vessel that you are, becomes empty because you haven't spent time with God, because you 
have poured yourself out on somebody or something, okay? You've got to go back to God. You've got to refill. You've got to get back into the presence of God. You've got to get that conversation with the Holy Spirit moving again. You've got to get your want to back. You've got to get your want to back. You know, we can push that want to word into a lot of areas of life, because what are the things that God does God want you to do that you're not doing? Get your want to where God wants it to be. Because the things that you want to do, you're most likely going to do, that you really want to do. Right? Me and Jonathan were talking today. He's, just, he's like, yeah, when I went for my master's, I wanted it, so I went. I went for it. When I met Emily, I wanted her, so I went for her. That was all. <laughs> yeah. It's working out pretty good. You know, her, um, her love language is encouraging words. And I was telling her today, I'm like, honey, everything good in my life I have because of you. She likes that. She likes to hear that. But it's true. It's, it's absolutely true. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. All right. Bow our heads. Lord God, your word says, if we draw near to you, we, you will draw near to us. Lord God, we just make a decision right now to draw near to you. We're going to push out any clutter in our lives, Lord Jesus, any cares. Lord God, we're going to stop in our day, and make sure that we're on the same page as you, that we're hearing clearly from you, that your spirit is on the foremost of our thoughts and our want list, God. Lord Jesus, let us remember the time that we had hands laid on us for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us remember what it felt like to be full of your spirit. Let us stir up this gift of the Holy Spirit inside of us so we can be empowered to speak boldly to our friends and neighbors, Lord. So we can be empowered to do your work, Lord. So we will no longer resist your voice. Lord God, I just pray that each of us would be encouraged to step beyond our comfort zone to do more than what we think we can do, Lord, because as we do things in the supernatural, by your power, by your leading of your spirit, Lord, you're right there to catch us and do more with us than what we ever can do with our own hands, with our own voice, with our own intellect, Lord. That your wisdom by your spirit would teach us and mold us and help us minister to people that are more educated than we are and who have a, a heart set against you, God. May your spirit be with us so we can soften the hearts of those who we minister to. Lord God, help us all to get our want to where it's supposed to be. To make sure that our hearts are centered on you and that we are seeking you in the littlest of things so you could have your way in our lives. So we could live this life according to the way you would have us live. No longer lean on our own understanding, God, but on yours. Lord God, I just pray that you do this in our hearts and each of us would make a determination, God, to have a relationship with you. It wouldn't just be a read my Bible and pray every day. But it's a relationship, a time with you to hear your voice, to be filled with the goodness and greatness of your spirit. So that we could have more than enough to pour out on our friends and neighbors and family. To look through your eyes and, 
and speak with your voice and hear with your ears, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making us more like you. Thank you, Jesus. In 2 Timothy 1.6, I read the first half of the verse. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying out of hands. And this gift of the Holy Spirit to do more than you can naturally is available to each of us. And if you've never hand, had hands laid on you for the gift of the Spirit, and you'd like to do that, I, I would like to pray with you tonight. I'd like to hand, lay hands on you. And if that's you, you can come right up here. I mean, there were so many hands going up about people, I'm, I'm possessed by the Spirit of God. Awesome. But if you are here tonight and you're saying, man, I don't have this power of this Holy Spirit. I don't, I don't feel the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't feel like I have the, the power to live and do, but you want that. You can have it tonight.
Come on, come on, church. Got a great word tonight. Great word tonight. Say this with me. Say, I can be as full as I want to be, and I want to be. There's your whole message in a sentence. Praise God. Beautiful job. Thank you for sharing the word with us. Are you blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Stand with me. I'll send you home blessed. We can all go out and eat or do something or whatever and have a good time. I know I'm hungry. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Father, thank you for this evening. What a glorious time we have had in your presence, Jesus. Absolutely awesome. And I speak a blessing now over each and every person. I pray that the the Lord of peace go with you and that the peace of the Lord be on you. In Jesus' name, God bless each and every one of you. We'll see you on Sunday morning.